So part three of this, how to train your dragon dragon. Um, all we're gonna do this time is add some rocks, finish the painting, and then play around with the lighting quite a bit now and start looking at how the scene looks with different, different lighting scenarios. So let's add some more paint. Um, we'll go to uh, pick a darker blue and we're going to pepper it all the way along the model. So what we want to do is, I've just noticed those spines don't go all the way into the model. Um, so what I might do is just adjust those first. Glad we noticed that early on. And then back to here with paint. And then if you just hold on like this, but wobble your hand, that gives you a nice start to your painting. So I'm going to go all the way down the spine. Remember, symmetry is off now. We're coming out of the symmetry mode now. I'm just going to pebble dash it all the way. In fact, no, symmetry is on there by mistake. Um, there we go. So now we're getting a nice peppered effect just down the middle, all the way to the end. And then if we come back and then do it really fast with a small brush, it gives us that very much finer uh, spattered effect that looks like a, a lizard's skin. So with a combination of those different brush sizes and how you jitter your hand, then you'll get some nice effects on that. Just keep changing the size as you're working. And then where you're going into the other colors, jitter onto that edge. And that'll give you, that'll break up the line of where the, the, the two skin colors meet. And we'll, do, we'll go back over that a few times as we, um, as we work. Now, if I go closer to, I get that much finer line and further away, I get that larger dotted line. So bear in mind, you don't have to just keep changing your brush size. What you do is keep moving in and out as well. So that's a useful little tip to know. And I'm using the grip on the non-dominant hand to keep hitting it. And that allows me to keep moving the model around while I'm constantly spraying. So that's, that's how we're able to do that. So I'll just do the odd dot around here. Don't want too much in that area and then faster again pebble dash it and then all down this side pretty much everything we're going to do in this video now is non-symmetrical so we're, we you know we've moved out of the symmetrical phase of this uh, modeling process and we're doing it all differently we don't want anything to look the same on the two sides now um, one thing i want to do um in fact, I will just go a little bit further first. I'm going to, one of the next things I'm going to do is merge some of the layers. So I want to merge the wings in with the finger spines and that will allow me to then move them around and manipulate them. And when we come to really break in the symmetry, that will make a big difference. So what that means is I've got to go and go here. So get that out of the way now, I don't need it. That's the, the, the mirror. So I want this one, which is this one here, welded with this one. So I think it's layer one and layer six, and then we just go onto actions and merge. And what that'll do is that'll weld the two together. Now, it will cause some problems if you're not careful. Um, it, 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 it could cause, oops, it could cause issues like that, for example, there where I've left it with a gap. So we'd have to go back in and fill that in with, um, uh, well, the one that I use to fill that in usually is inflate. And you'll see what I mean. So if you just hit inflate there, it will weld it together. And because they're now one, they're welding across that line, as you can see. So that's a nice way of fixing that one. But remember, they are now one model, so everything's going to blend and blur into one. And the one thing we can do now is just add that model now to this model. 
So it's layer four, layer six, I think it is now. That gives you the finger spines and that, and then merge again. Let's see what that looks like. So yeah, that's worked fine again. So again, now if we where we've got problems like that, that I'd, that I'd, I'd, uh, the fingers just aren't quite on. The, in fact, is that different than that side? No. So what I've done is I've made a slight mistake there. So if I now increase the size again, that's going to bring all them together and smooth it back down. I should have really spotted that. I shouldn't have really gone ahead and words them without checking that. So I'm glad I spotted it now because that would have got worse as time went on. So wherever there's a problem like that, we're not welding, I'm inflating it together. You can see that there. Because at any second now I'm going to paint all this and I really don't want any errors like that occurring anywhere along the, the wing. That looks good. That looks good. Let's see if I can spot any more of them. Looks fine. And now I think what I'll do is I'll add the um, colour that I want, I want a red colour down the towards the end of the wings. So we'll go paint and we'll go deep red and we'll go low opacity and low hardness like so. And I want the end of the wings all tinged with a red colour like, like that all the way down. That looks quite cool, quite pleased with that. And then smaller brush and then pebble dash it as well. Let's give it a little bit more detail. If you're going to take this to something like substance painter or you know a dedicated painting package, then you know this this really doesn't matter, but I do quite like it if it's just while I'm while I'm working, it's it's quite nice to have something like this just to brighten it up inside that you know it just makes it look better as you're modeling it and it looks much more like the end result that you're going to get let's just put some red in that and that's too much there i don't want to do that bit that's fine and then underneath i think i'll throw in a bit more yellow and we'll have a really low opacity and you see that i'm going all over the blue so it doesn't look quite as aggressive it doesn't look like it's a separate part quite so much so that looks quite good quite pleased with that one thing i didn't do before is i didn't paint the eyes so i'm going to take the uh, let me see if i can still use the mirror no i can't so i'm going to paint it independently with paint i'll do a dark green Let's go right in on it. It needs to be a higher resolution, doesn't it? So we'll go increase, 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 increase. So we've got a super high res eyeball now. And that'll hold the colour a lot better. Take the opacity up and the hardness up. And we'll just do like a... There we go. Yeah, so that looks good. Um, and we want a snake eye. And then we'd want a yellow. Slightly different on each side, a bit bit wonky, which is what what I want. And instead of changing the material, I'm just gonna put a specular highlight on it. And we can change that later if we decide to go a different way with that. But that gives us a little bit of something there. Let's pump some red into that um, mouth. So these lights now, I can make them follow the model. So if you just drag the light onto one of your models in the hierarchy like so, 
what that means is now they will follow as the model moves now the lights follow it so that's helpful so we can we can position those however we like them now because they won't move um, they'll just follow it and, and give us the the lighting look that we've we've asked for and then let's get this out of the way and then one more light added oops I did one too many then and this one here I'm gonna make it really small and you'll see with settings I'll make the brightness low and the cone width really low and why have we done that because we want to just do a, what I call like a highlight light I just want to drop in there I want to have a, like a, an orangey fire color something like that and then check the intensity let's get it looking good there we go and then that light drag that on as well that means that I'll travel with it as well and that just means you've got a nice highlight on that on that set of teeth there and it just really makes the model pop a little bit from from the front so I'm quite quite pleased with that and that. Um, let's chip those wings out a little bit now so clay and um, we'll use uh, we need a different tool now so we'll just use one of the brushes that we've we've made and what we're going to do now is I'm going to use that brush to do this and what that is doing is just giving you a really raggedy end to the to the um, skin you can see it's like cutting it with a pair of scissors or something and that'll add a bit more realism at the end we'll smooth it down a little bit but not a lot and that's how we can add holes in if we feel we need them be careful because the holes may highlight that you've got quite a thick skin again if you remember I said I've made the, th the skin quite thick because we're going to do at some point this is going to be 3d printed so that thickness of the of the, the skin membrane has really helped there we go oh gosh I didn't notice that <laughs> I must have had the mirror on for the last bit, so I'll turn that off. Just uh, it would have been annoying if I'd have spotted that later on. There we go. That looks fine. And because we didn't do, we didn't get enough red over this side, did we? So. Um, be a bit too light there we go that looks good now before we go any further I'm going to break the symmetry now but I'd like some uh, a little bit of uh, f landscape to frame this so I'm going to make a new layer I'm just going to use some of the inbuilt rocks so clay and we'll use single and go to uh, rocks and then we've got all sorts of rocks that he could be perched on um, so we'll just use a couple of these make sure I've got one with a nice flat top um, let's try this should be the right sort of size like so so I just dropped it in and then scaled it up and then what I'm going to do is use the same piece to chip away the rock so it'll it'll give me a nice rock effect um, hopefully anyway um, because it's already made of rock so the bits that I'm removing aren't just flat shapes I'm actually going to remove them based on a rock model so I always find that that gives me something um, nice to play with yeah that looks good looks, looks one thing I did know is that it looks like he's falling forward, doesn't it? Because if, if, if 
I don't know. He's he just he's, his head is high. That's all. I do quite like him forward like that. Um, let's just play with that light a little bit. That's that's the light that's really powerful. And I think now we can. Um, in fact, I was going to change the sun, but before I do that, I'm just going to use a grey colour. Get this rock sprayed the right sort of colour. Because it was red, I don't want that. That's good. And then I'm going to keep adding. I'm not, still not completely happy with that, so I'm going to move to chopping out a bit more of this. I love that faceted rock look. Um, so I'm always using rocks that are chipped away, like as if the, their, end, their, their edge is chipped off over the years. So you get a lot of them free inside of um, Adobe Medium. So add some more rocks at the bottom. Maybe a little bit smaller, I don't know. Um, looks okay for, for, for now. Uh, and now what I was gonna do is I'm gonna change the scenery. So I'm gonna go to World, and then move this out of the way, and this out of the way, and World, and then we'll change the sun brightness right down. Let's move the, um, this is called the IBL, so image-based lighting. We'll bring that down, and now all the work's being done by the lights now, as you can see. And then we'll position the light. The shadows are stronger now, which is what I like. So as you can see, it you know it's really playing with those um, the, sh the the shadows underneath the, the the creature now, which is quite useful. I think what I'll do is I'll angle this forward, and then with the feet, I'm going to break the symmetry, and I'm going to angle the feet forward a bit like this. And then the same with this one and angle it out a little bit and then with the landscape bring it flatter like that and then go back and move these as if they're grabbing grabbing on yeah that's better just feels like it's in the scene a little bit more and then we can move that tail a bit now with move and then on the settings button, active layer only. So now we're moving the whole thing. So now we can do things like this. And this is going to really change the look and feel of it now because we're. It is affecting the ground, which isn't ideal, but we could turn that off and bring that up. And maybe even get that jaw open a bit more. There you go. Maybe that light needs to be a bit further out, I don't know. And then we'll set that colour back to more of a white colour. And increase its in intensity a bit. It just gives us that nice highlight on the front. Like so. This is more, definitely more of a focus there on the front. And that's it, we're ready for 3D print now, so I'll prepare this for, for print and in the next video, or one of the next videos, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's prepared for 3D print. I'm just taking a few photographs now of the final model, so if this is the kind of thing that you like to see us doing, then please give it a thumbs up and drop us a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when we're uploading the next video, which is usually on a Wednesday and a Friday.